Hey there guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to the team builder for my week one game versus Aberforth and the Newcastle Umbreon in the GBA D-League Season 3. Right, so, gonna be honest with you straight away here. Uh, it's been like a week and a half since I played this game and I'm doing this the day before this needs to be uploaded, so... If I can't remember my reasonings behind picking the moves um, for, for what I've picked for each mon, then I do apologise in advance. Um, you do now know why. I will try and remember to the best of my ability, um, because as you'll see in the game tomorrow, it was a really good game. The sets that we both bought were pretty much spot on to what we needed, uh, and it was a well thought out battle. We won't go into any more sort of spoilers, um, so let's just get straight into the team builder. I, if I remember in editing, I will put the two... Um, Two squads on the side, but just as a reminder, um, my draft is Megalopony, Latias, Clefable, Registeel, Crocodile, Volcarona, Delmai, Skuntank, Electivire, Floatzel, and Staraptor. My opponent, Abforth, has bought, or sorry, has got in his squad Jirachi, Mamoswine, Crobat, Mega Beedrill, Primarina, Miltank, Rotom Spook, as he calls it, aka Normal Rotom, um, Persian Alola. Uh, Como O, Embor, and Superior. Very threatening draft. Fast offense in Superior and in Crobat and in Beedrill. Wall breakers like Mamoswine, um, Embor, maybe Como O. I, I don't know what role Como O kind of fits in. I guess it's kind of a niche Pokemon. Um, but yeah, you know, his team's full. And then Bulk, you know, Jirachi. Pre-Marina, Miltank, um, Persian Alola, if, if that counts, with, with um, Fur Coat, and Komuro's pretty fat, uh, Crobat's pretty fat, you, you know, there's, there's, there's a decent mixture of everything that he needs in his draft, so very hard team to prep for, but the team I have got in front of me is obviously what I decided to bring, so we'll go straight into it, first of all we'll go look at Volcarona, um, looking at his draft, the mixture of Flamethrower, Psychic, and Gig Drain literally hits everything. Um, super effective in one way or another. Uh, apart from Persian Alola. Well, I, I lie completely when I say it hits everything. It hit, doesn't hit Miltank, Rotom, uh, or Persian Alola. Super effective. Um, however, sort of at plus one, most of these attacks are doing a lot of damage. I am Grassy and Z because um, Bloom Doom at plus one against the Pre Marina. If I get any kind of prior chip damage off of that thing, it'll do a massive amount or take out. And if I'm at plus one special defense, pre Marina won't be taking me out with anything if it's, uh, if it's a bulky set. If it's an offensive set, obviously I'll just kill it with the Bloom Doom. So either or, this thing can pretty much take on the majority of his team. Even if he did decide to bring Miltank, Rotom and Alolan Persian in one team. Um, Alolan Persian isn't going to be taking like a plus one flamethrower. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Um, but, you know, even if he does bring the rest of his mons, they're all going to have a hard time facing this Volcarona. I am running just standard max speed, max special attack, and then the, the, the four EVs and HP to actually just, obviously, survive uh, two Stealth Rock switch-ins. Um, I've had to go max speed basically just to run the risk of speed tying with Jirachi, or Scarf Jirachi if I'm at plus one. Um, otherwise, uh, and Miltank if he bought offensive Miltank. It's got a couple of um, base 100s, and if Jirachi's coming, there's every sort of possibility that it will be an offensive set, so I didn't want to run the risk of being slower when this is probably one of my best ways of taking out that, that Jirachi he does have in that squad. So, that's the reasoning behind the uh, Volcarona. Next up, we have Fluffykins, who has since been changed to Floppany uh, as a nickname. Um, Lopany against his draft again. It you know it's just something that does a lot of damage to his team. Uh, it's only outsped by Mega Beedrill and then some Scarfers, the Scarf Mill Tank, Scarf Crobat, potentially Scarf Amishwine. Have it on the Calcs. Um, what else is there? Jirachi. I mean, looking at his draft, Lopany hits everything for at least neutral. Um, Jirachi will take a lot from High Jump Kick. Mamish won't die to Fighting Move. Crobat will take massive amount of damage from Return of Ice Punch. Mega Beedrill is Mega Beedrill. Pre Marina, um, again, just weak to things like Return Thunder Punch. Miltank obviously won't appreciate a high jump kick in the slightest. Um, Rotom Spook, again, obviously because of Scrappy I can hit that thing. Lowland Persian, Fur Coat isn't saving it. Komoro could be a bit of an issue. I'll give you that much. Uh, Embor, uh, again, it could probably switch in because of its massive HP stat. And then Superior is just Superior, it does Superior things. But the set I decided to bring was Mono 
fighting and mono, well, duo fighting, duo water, I guess you could say. Um, I didn't feel the need. I, I think originally I had Thunder Punch before, uh, sorry, for the Primarina and the Crobat, but, you know, I think at plus one attack, I pretty much took them out with Return um, and High Jump Kick anyway. I'm running Quick Attack purely for the Beedrill. If I can get rocks up and I'm at plus one, Beedrill dies to a Quick Attack. Quick Attack does 50% minimum. I could have potentially obviously not bought the power up punch set and bought fake out, but I felt like free attack sort of free normal moves is a bit ridiculous. Um, and that might have potentially obviously helped me deal with the B drill a bit easier, but with stealth rocks up, obviously I'm thinking I'll, I'll be able to have a much easier time with it. Um, it it's kinda of like an emergency way of taking out the B drill. There are other ways obviously in the team. Um, uh, but the the coverage that I've got on this set is is obviously just just enough to hit his team hard enough, in in my opinion. The, the EVs, obviously, we're just going 220 in speed because once the Mega Evolved, that's enough to outspeed Max Speed uh, Crobat. I can't outspeed Mega Beedrill um, unless I Agility or bring an Agility set, and I'm not going to be able to outspeed any sort of Scarfers after that point, um, even if I do go Max Speed. So it, I thought, you know, I'm better off using the remaining EVs and HP just to give me that little tiny bit of extra bulk, which may potentially save me um, during the game at some point. So. Um, that's pretty much it for Megalopony, uh, you know, just a solid mod in any team really, it's something you can just chuck into a team which is lovely. Uh, next up we've got Registeel. Registeel is my best switch into Mega B. Obviously it's immune to its poison stab and it resists its bug stab, um, however knock off and drill run are annoying moves and shouldn't exist on Mega B drill. Draw, draw run won't be doing much obviously, but you know, it does mean if this thing is weakened to the point uh, you know, extremely low before B drill even gets to do anything. It's no longer a stop to B drill, and that's kind of scary. Um, we've gone Shadow Claw, Iron Head, Toxic, Stealth Rock. Reason I've gone for this is um, Iron Head literally, well, I mean, it, it hits some things, but I bought Shadow Claw because I basically needed something to hit Jirachi because I can't hit it with Toxic and I can't hit it with Iron Head really. Um, obviously, Iron Head will do good damage to Mammoth Swine, to Crobat, Mega B, Pre Marina. Mill tank won't take much from either like any of these, but I have got the toxic. Um, uh, Rotom was another thing which uh, Iron Head and potentially toxic if he's a subset couldn't hit, so Shadow Claw would always break one of their subs. And Olin Persian, well, that can't really do too much to me in the first place, so we can just kind of chip each other down if we want to. Komoo is a bit of a problem. Um, again, toxic's there as well as Emboy, you know, if I can toxic that thing and have it, uh, you know, kill itself effectively, that'd be nice. And Again, it's, it's kind of like a switch into Superior, depending on his uh, his hidden powers uh, or his move pool in general. So, Registeel sort of in general was like a solid defensive mon this game. I think it's pretty much a solid defensive mon in most games and most teams that you want to bring. Um, but it was my only answer to Beedrill in like my whole of my draft. So, um, I had to bring it physically defensive and... You know, if I can just get any kind of hit, even a Shadow Claw on it, um, I think that'll pretty much just put it in range for something like my Lopany to kill it or one of my other mons a bit later on. Um, yeah, Toxic's there just to hit the like the bulk. I know he has Jirachi, Mega B Drill, and Crobat, which are immune. Um, but Toxic King, something like I said, the Embor, the Superior, the Como O, uh, Rotom Mill Tank, Pre Marina um, would all be incredibly helpful. So I was willing to sort of run the risk of. Uh, just, just, just swapping that out. Thunder Wave was definitely an option. Could have slowed any Scarfers like on Jirachi or Crobat or Mega Beedrill or Mill Tank or Persian. Um, you know, slowing any of these things. Actually, to be fair, sort of in, in hindsight, Thunder Wave was probably better. Um, but it, it doesn't matter now. I needed, I felt like I needed Toxic at the time just to hit some of them walls, which could otherwise just switch in um, a, a bit easier next time. Um, just max defense set, as you can see, max HP, max defense, a little bit in sped death. Um, again, like I said, this is my B drill answer. I need it to be as fat physically as possible. Um, so that was the uh, Reggie Seal. Next up, we have got Corin the Latias. Um, I am a fast, bulky set can take lots of hits. I can't really remember what this is for, um, but we have got the uh, Psychic Roost Defog Toxic with Yachi Berry, so I can do, so I can live a hit from Mamoswine and do some good damage back. I appreciate this set is completely walled by Jirachi, but looking at my team, I have got, you know, Volcarona who can deal with it, 
Lopini that can deal with it, um, and potentially uh, da -da -da, someone else who can deal with it, but I can't remember who. Um, yeah, I, the reason I bought this thing is, is because he does obviously have Alolan Persian, again that's a decent switch into it. I can toxic that thing if I want, but I don't think that Alolan Persian can really do too much to me. If he's running Dark Pulse, it's not going to hit hard. Um, if he brings Foul Play, I'm low attack stat anyway, so you know, we didn't do too much. Parting Shot could be annoying. Otherwise, I think this thing was here just mainly to be hazard removal. I know it's not something that I want to kind of bring. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> hey, bless, excuse me. Hopefully, I remember to cut that out. If not, you just heard me sneeze. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure why I bought this set, if I'm being honest with you. Psychic obviously does hit the Beedrill and the Crobat. However, I'm not going to be staying in against the Beedrill. Crobat could obviously definitely be an option to, to bring this thing on. Um, Pre-Marine, I mean, Toxic again on this thing. Especially because I've got Toxic on this, maybe Thunder Wave would be better on Registeel in hindsight. Again, um, we've got Toxic though. Not sure why, because um, it just invites in the, the Jirachi. But this is the set I bought. I definitely needed some speed in it because I outspeed the base 100s now, um, which is Mill Tank and the Jirachi. So again, it still makes no sense why I'm trying to speed creep the Jirachi, but I only have Psychic as an attacking move. Um, but it does hit the Komo super effective, it does hit the Embor super effective. So I kind of wanted fat, but I also wanted offense at the same time. Um, Yachi Berry, obviously, like I was, I was kind of in a toss up between that and the Soldier. Um, but I figured, like, if I could live a hit from the uh, Momos one and take that down, or at least weaken it for Lopini to revenge kill, then would be in a good place because Mammo Swine breaks uh, cores and it especially breaks my core right really well. Latias is super affected by Ice. The Fable will take huge damage from Iron Head and Earthquake, and Registeel won't like Earthquake anyway. So that's the bulky kind of set. Uh, he does have the Toxic Spikes option. He does have the Stealth Rock option. I don't believe he has spikes, um, so I felt like it was quite important that I did keep the hazards off the field, especially toxic spikes because as I'll get onto it in a minute, Michael Fable is magic guard, uh, not magic guard, sorry, it is unaware. But like I said, we'll go over that in a moment. Uh, next up, we have got the Star Raptor, um, Captain Brave Bird, uh, with the Choice Scarf, Reckless, Use and Brave Bird, Double Edge, and Close Combat. Um, hits his team incredibly well. Minus the Jirachi. However, I don't think Jirachi is really going to be one of switching in too often on this thing because, you know, Brave Bird from Staraptor hurts anyway, regardless if you resist it. Um, so it's kind of like a nuke button, but the Choice Scarf is, is pretty much necessary because it outspeeds Crobat, it'll outspeed Mega B Drill, um, it'll outspeed Alolan Persian as long as that's not Scarf. Uh, you know, it will outspeed Superior as long as that's not Scarf. And you know, Como, Embor, Superior, um, well, B Drill, all weak to flying. So, four of his uh, 11 mons are weak to flying. Um, his only resist is uh, Jirachi, I believe, and Rotom. But then again, Rotom is so weak, uh, not weak, is frail, um, to the point where Brave Bird will probably be doing a massive amount of damage or taking it out. So, um, Rotom would be kind of like a pretty good check to this thing because obviously it's immune to my double edge as well. But, you know, I need U10 for the, the momentum and close combat is there just for coverage. Probably because it's my best option to hit Jirachi. Obviously, this thing does get Heat Wave, but Heat Wave realistically isn't going to be doing much based on, like, the, the stats as you can see. Again, I have to run max speed to run the risk of speed tying with a Scarf Jirachi or a plus one Jirachi or, like, a plus one Mill Tank or, well, you know, Scarf Mill Tank, anything like that. Um, I had to bring Scarf, basically. Um, I, I can't wait for the day where I can bring a Choice Banded Star Raptor purely because it just destroys so many things um, but that's it I mean EV is pretty standard like I've said uh, the move pool pretty standard also it's just a standard Staraptor set it just seems to work really well on paper this week um, can, can put a lot of pressure on uh, our Perforce team finally next up we have got the Clefable. Fable um, we are max physically defense with the Babiri Berry um, I bought this for Jirachi I must have um, that's the only thing I can really sort of realistically see. The poison berry might have been a bit more sensible, but we'll go over the team anyway. We've got unaware because I simply need unaware um, to deal with any superior because contrary superior is scary. If he's toxic leech seed superior, fair enough. There's not really much I can do about that. But set up superior is definitely more scary to me than sitting behind a sub leech seed superior because I have got uh, Staraptor, I have got Volcarona. 
Um, and I have, well, yeah, they're my main things really that can just hit it. Um, so that's kind of why I decided to bring Unaware this week. Attack wise, I've got a knockoff, Moonblast, Moonlight, Flamethrower. I don't need uh, any kind of speed in this thing because I'll be outsped by most things in this team anyway because base 60 is pretty slow. Um, I didn't need any speed investment, so you know what? I thought I'll run knockoff, I need a knockoff user. His switch into uh, Clefable could potentially be the Jirachi. Obviously, I do have the fire coverage. Um, but a knockoff on Jirachi could be huge, especially if it's a choice mon. Um, you know, knock off, well, knocking off anything really is just going to be useful and weaken, weakening it. Um, Moonblast is just solid. You know, it, it hits a lot of things. It can do damage to Como, super effective quad. Obviously, uh, Ember will be neutral. Rotom will take a decent amount. Miltank will take a decent amount. Uh, Pre Marina could probably be like a safe switch on this thing. But I do have the, the Moonlight, and obviously it doesn't get any recovery and anything other than leftovers. And I do have the knockoff, like I have said. Um, obviously, Crobat and Mega Beedrill could be like the main issues here, uh, along with Jirachi. Can take hits from Mamoswine with this. Um, and obviously, it stops the potential Rogue Curse Mamoswine as well. Um, but yeah, I felt like the set could hit a lot of things hard. It's kind of like bulky offense, but mainly bulky. But you know, it can just chip away at lots of things on its draft with this kind of set in general. So I felt like that was kind of like a solid bring for, for this week. So the mons we didn't bring sort of this week: Crocodile, um, the Delmise Scum Tank, Electivire, and Floatzel. Definitely, some of them could have put in a good shout for for like a, a position in the team. Um, you know, Floatzel could be something, um, especially with Aqua Jet. It could have potentially done some work, especially if Crobat was bulky and obviously didn't outspeed me. Uh, you know, plus one Aqua Jet would do a lot of damage, I would imagine, to something like a Mega Beedrill. Would outspeed most of his team, so, you know, there, there's some things there which could have also been bought, but I felt like the team which I had bought was probably one of the best I could really sort of build for uh, Ab's, uh, Abe's team. So that will be it for the team build. I'm trying to keep them short and sweet because I know that before my battle, uh, or sorry, in the battle video, I will roughly run over each of my mons again, um, just to give people who miss the uh, miss the team builder uh, kind of a brief overview of what happens uh, with the team. Um, but obviously, you guys have sat here and listened to me drone on about uh, about my crappy team. So yeah, thank you for watching this video, guys. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, leave a like. Make sure you check out all the links and stuff below. If I remember, I'll put Ant Force YouTube and Twitter in there. And obviously, there'll be the GBA uh, YouTube and Twitter in there as well. And obviously, my I can't speak today. Obviously, my own Twitter down there as well. So, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you for the battle tomorrow.